Welcome in everybody, it's Dr. Living Good. Welcome to the Dash Dot Masterclass. A masterclass designed to give you the roadmap to change your year, to change your life. It takes a different you, a different level of thinking to make the change you're looking for. It's not just tools, it's not just a diet, it's just not, not just a program, it takes a mentality shift. And when you can get this secret weapon going in your favor, in your direction, with a focus, the progress you can make in a year will blow you away. In fact, I would argue you are radically underestimating what you can get out of this next year. But we've got to have a plan. We can't just be daydreaming. We actually got to get it down. So I would encourage you, if you have your Living a Daily Journal, to pull that out. And that journal will help guide you through how to set this up. Whether your cover looks like this or it's an updated, a different version, that's where the practicalness and the war plan happens. Now, the dash dot of this masterclass is to remind you that starting today, I don't care if you're watching this in the middle of the year or start of the year, you have a clean slate. You can decide to hit the reset button. You can have a blank line and a period to define how your life is going to be moving forward. That's a dash and a dot, dash dot. It's blank, you fill it in. I'm gonna help you get there and by the end of this course, you're going to define what that word is for this month, for this year, maybe it's a decade word, something to anchor you to, to bring you back, to refocus you, why you're doing all this, why you started that improvement process, what you're here to accomplish, why God has you alive today and other people didn't make it. So that definition is what we are after and we're gonna come up with a roadmap, I'm gonna be walking you through the pages of this journal to guide you through it and set up every single day for the next month. You're then gonna be able to do a progress review to see how you're doing. Every human being wants to make progress. And then every 90 days, you do a complete reset and you can go through what we're gonna teach you in this course. You'll understand how to do it by then. Every, 30 day, every 90 days and reset your life and do a reevaluation of your whole life to understand where am I not flowing at? Where am I not rolling along at? What areas need some attention? And it gives you this cycle every 30 and every 90 days to be making progress and chunks it down into very easy, small steps and progress you can make every day, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1% to make those improve. My name is Dr. Living Good. It's my actual real first name. There's the Living Good crew, Nurse Living Good, the beautiful, and the kiddos. Uh, there's three now, Sullivan, London, and Ireland. Um, and I've just been on a journey. Uh, multiple times Amazon bestseller. Uh, I was an Olympic team doctor, um, doctor for universities, and won all kinds of awards for the care we've delivered because we focus on real health care. And now it's branched into working for organizations and churches to help them just transform the way they think, the way their health is, um, really just making whole life improvements for people. Uh, that had led me to 25,000 plus people through drug-free primary care as a doctor of natural medicine as well. And yeah, that's kind of the journey. I know a lot of that is real relevant. Um, I think if you don't know me though, it helps to give just a little bit of credibility of maybe who would be guiding you over the next uh, you know, couple of days through this course. But there's the Amazon bestseller, uh, Make Food Simple was one of them. Uh, our other one is Living Good Daily. So that was the number one bestseller. And so those books have been transforming hundreds of thousands of people's lives and there's no difference in yours. You can transform through that too, I truly believe that by going through and applying this and playing all out, if you will commit to this process, there is a roadmap and a science as shown and studied, which I'll show you. There is tens of thousands of people that have applied this and completely changed their life. And I lived it, so I know it works. Let me take you back just a moment. If you've never heard really my story, it all started with this. I came to know all this and this is what I think is relevant to you. And that's, 2007, I'm in doctorate school, getting my first of two doctorates. Get the phone call from that woman right there. That's Mrs. Living Good. Mama Living Good. And she's balling. The guy on my left, in, on your right, is my dad with the glasses, and his heart had just shut down. So he's on a helicopter being airlifted to Mayo Clinic. He had no previous conditions, no drugs, 
passed a strenuous physical in order to work for UPS every year for the last 35 years. So this is complete shock. Family's freaking out. It's in those moments that you realize everything else really doesn't matter if you or your loved ones aren't healthy. We're going to talk a lot about it during this. And you might not be here just for health. You might be here solely for health. But everything stopped in our world. And I saw my dad go through something that I spent my life trying to prevent people from ever having to go through. And that's the American healthcare system. I would call it the sick care system because my dad was handed over to 15 different doctors, which produced 15 different drugs. Had my dad out of work, couldn't bite, couldn't fish, can do anything he wanted to do. And the cost of going through that left my family with over $200,000 in medical debt. They finally diagnosed my dad after uh, two years of Hodgkin's lymphoma and lupus and all these different conditions, arthritic conditions, heart conditions. They diagnosed him with a condition called Kogan's syndrome. And I highlighted it there off the research on PubMed on this condition. 250 people ever have been diagnosed with that. And I think this is worth noting that what we have done as society in labeling people, especially with the thing that 250 people ever have had, you can do a test, you can get a label, you can define something, but that doesn't define the person. And just because we now had a condition name didn't mean my dad was gonna get healthier because of it. So we've put all of our resources on naming the condition, treating the sickness, managing the disease, and we're forgetting to lead the person to become healthy. And it doesn't matter if that's mentally for you or you're recovering physically from something. So I had no one showing my dad how to get well. All of them were focused on his symptoms, his pain, his heart condition, his inflammation. The fact that it knocked his hearing out. He had to have cochlear implants. They did a surgery to his heart. Are you focused on the symptom or the system that created the system? I mean, out of the gates here, come on now. Are you focused on the symptom or the system that created the symptom? Are you focused on the fact that you're fighting with your husband or your wife or the system that has created that? The turmoil that's created the unhappiness. Are you focused on your blood pressure being off or the fact that you're eating poorly and not moving, which is a side effect of raising the blood pressure? Symptom or system that created it? Are you trying to fix the sink because there's a clog or the water's not coming out properly? Or are you trying to fix the well, the source? Let me say it another way. Are you fixing the fruit of the tree or what produces the fruit, which is the roots of the tree? Let me say it another way. Are you masking your problem and covering it up, taking a medication, lowering your thyroid numbers, your cholesterol numbers, your blood pressure numbers, and the second I take you off those, drug, what hap those drugs, what happens to your numbers? They just get worse again. Are you masking the problem? Or are you actually finding a solution to the problem? Because I can tell you firsthand when it comes to health, those drugs are not a solution. They're a cover-up. I'm not saying they're not necessary at times. There's times my dad needed them, but they are a cover-up. Are you masking your pain with substance abuse? Or are you fixing the cause of it and understanding and getting better and making progress? I'm not saying this stuff is easy. I'm just saying it's necessary and it's worth it. Are you fixing the symptom or the cause? What would you rather have? Because I can tell you the cause is what we're after. The cause is the cure. The well is the source. The roots produce the fruit. Some of y'all just need to be just uprooted and put in to good soil, right? Don't you wish you could just uproot that sometimes? Put it into good soil? So, symptom or system, sink or well, mask or solution, symptom or cause, fruit or root. Got it? We got to go after. We got to get to the cause. That's the intention of this. I can give you tools. I can hand you a diet program. 
I can give you an exercise regimen, but if you're the same person, the well is the same source, the roots are in the same soil, then all that is is just putting something on top and the same person's just doing, doing stuff a little bit differently and then you end up in the same spot. We gotta dig down. We gotta dig down. We gotta understand what you want. I think why people think this is because there's so many programs. I wanna deprogram you through this process. Weight watchers and exercise regimens, we have cover-ups of pills. That's just on the health side of things let alone substance abuse, let alone quick fixes, let alone external focus of beauty when internally we're hurting and painful. Surface level, we look like we have it all, but under the surface, we're in a bunch of credit card debt. You see what I mean? So it's this cover-up job. In America, I think we do it more than anywhere. So my dad, that's what he needed. He needed to fix the cause and all he was getting was Dr. Patch. And finally, after the last one, which is a prominent neuro, neurologi neurologist at Mayo Clinic, and I could have done the exam he did. I was going through learning all the tests he's talking about, and he's just like, well, I think I'm going to diagnose you with Kogan syndrome, and can we take you downstairs to take pictures of this because we might not ever see it again. And I said, you got to be kidding me. And that's the day we walked. And when we left the hospital and started looking for other solutions, all we got were a lot of cover-up things, a lot of quick fixes. It isn't going to be one supplement that fixes your problem. It's not going to be one diet plan that fixes your problem. It does, it's not that, well, Doc, have you heard about keto? Oh, Doc, have you heard, tried vegetarianism? Oh, Doc, have you tried this supplement of this juice? Yes, those things can help. But if you're still eating toxic foods that's keto approved or vegetarian approved, or you're just taking a supplement, but you didn't work out and you're still stressing like crazy, you're still not fixing all the roots. I'm not saying that stuff is bad. I'm just saying we're putting our focus and faith on one small thing when it takes a collection of getting better in multiple areas, which is exactly what we're going to walk you through. But you can't focus on too many of them at one time. And so this is where we started to learn. We wanted to fix the cause. We wanted to stop treating the symptom. We wanted to put the death to dieting. We wanted to deprogram my dad and my family and myself. And so we said enough, we pull him out of Mayo Clinic. My father moved in with me. My grandfather freaked out. What are you doing? You're pulling him out of the best hospital in the world, arguably. My mom is scared because she's got $200,000 in medical debt. She just wants my dad back so they could bike again or fish again. And life is ruined at this point. And so that's when we moved him in. And we started this process to get my dad well, we saw in a 90 day period of time, that's a crucial period, 90 days, sounds familiar with what we're gonna cover. I saw my dad come off 15 medications. We sent him home, we went biking again, he went fishing again. He was able to experience and meet his first grandbabies. He saw me get married, he got the chance to live good again. You realize how important health as a foundation is but then all these other areas of life because of the perspective that he got, because of the understanding of how to get to the root causes of things, it changed everything in his life. We got five more years on this planet with my dad. Unfortunately, he got this information too late. This is why I'm so glad you're listening right now. It's never too late because he would have never got those five years, but the liver damage was done. The heart was already cut into. He had already lost the hearing. His liver backed up at age 58, we lost him. And it was the hardest thing after watching tens of thousands of people thrive and overcome diseases of all types to watch the one person I couldn't save. Because at some point there's a limitation of matter, right? And it is still all God's plan. But we're gonna work as if it all is all up to us. But we'll pray as if it's all up to him. And so I just use it as more fuel but my dad never got to meet my three kids. My dad missed out on a lot of holidays. My, da my mom, the widow, doesn't have a life partner anymore. You see, there's things and people and memories and impact that if you're not careful, don't come out of you to impact the world, to create the memories, to be there for the people. And so some of you need to get selfishly unselfish over the next 90 days 
meaning you got to take care of yourself. you got to get right up here because when you do, everyone around you starts to become better. Why? Because your perspective is different and you're not as sharp to them. You have better energy that you show up with. You're healthier. You feel better about yourself, which makes their perspective and all boats rise. That's living good. That's what this is all about, that you can live good every day and then you can do good in the world for your family, for your purpose, for whatever is the reason that you are here. That's what my dad got robbed of. That's what went to the graveyard. That's what I'm trying to prevent from happening to you and to help you get it up out of there because you have a gift to give the world. No matter how small you may think it is, you do. I know this because you're alive. And if stuff has happened to you in the past, it had to happen. It had to happen. I know this because it did. It couldn't have happened any other way because it didn't. So you've been through stuff. I lost my dad. It had to happen that way. Maybe so I could sit here and holler at you on day one of this class that my pain and my test, the biggest one of my life, could be a testimony to encourage wherever you're at. But I want you to let some of that stuff go. And for some of you, it might need to be just letting go or getting some stuff out to make room for growth, for progress, for happiness. What happened had to happen. I know it because it didn't happen any other way. It had to go down that way. It didn't happen any other way. So that's the way it had to happen. Some of us need to just get over some of those things. They're tough. Doesn't mean the pain goes away. But that's how we can start moving forward. Let me share a part of the story I don't always get to share. So my dad, he's, he's 51. He's worked his whole life. He's provided for the family. Incredible dad. Every athletic event, he would work two jobs. He would work UPS. He would go in at 7 or 8 o'clock at night, and he would get done at 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. He would go to our construction working job. I worked there, too, um, as I was going through high school and college. He would work four hours there, come home, go to sleep about 1, and then be up again at 6. That was his regimen to provide so that we could have things and be taken care of. I would give all that back to have my dad back. But he did it. And I know what he did it for now. Being a dad, I understand. So 51, I move out. I'm at college. And my brother's out, obviously. My dad has been asking for toys his whole life. Do you know what I'm talking about, men? The boat. The tractor. The four-wheeler. the Just stuff, right? Just boys and their toys kind of thing. And he always held off. And he just drove an old, old used, you know, 10-year-old pickup and always just kind of switched that out and he never got it. But now is his time, his dad's time. And he's got his eye on this new sports car that was coming out at the time. It wasn't crazy expensive, but it was, you know, it was going to be a toy for dad. Mom's like, no, we don't need to do that. We need to like redo the kitchen. He's like, no, no, we're not remodeling the house. We're not, he's like, it's my time. Like, nope, the boys aren't getting anything. Dad's time. And he knew what mom would say. So against mom, Will, travels to a neighboring town. It's about 25 minutes away because my mom worked in an auto body shop. And he puts the money down for one of these. It's a Pontiac Solstice. You remember when these came out? This was cool. This was different. It was like, wow, kind of caught your eye. Looks like a little Mazda Miata almost. And then they made them for a few years. But it comes out and dad's just like, man. Can't you just see mom and I riding around Northeast Iowa and this thing? He's so excited, right? And so he goes over there and puts it down, but he tells me. And I'm like, Dad, are you crazy? Mom's going to kill you. And he's like, I don't care. It's, good. It's, it's time. So he puts the money down in the car. He orders it to come in because they're brand new. So it's going to take six weeks, eight weeks to come in. In between that happening, Dad's heart shut down. I can't make this stuff up. So of course, when your heart shuts down, you lose your job and you're getting hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical bills. Mom found out about the car and they had to cancel it and get the money back given the situation. Why am I sharing this with you? I just thought it was fitting for where we're going. So many different things I could say about this, you know, the potential of what it means in your future, the things to not miss out on, but the fact that the tipping point of right before my dad lost his health and life went downhill, so to say, 
It was wrapped around a vehicle. And it got me kind of spinning on it. And if you've read any of the journal or you've dug into it a little bit, the whole concept of it is the vehicle. You see, I think a lot of us, we need a new vehicle. We're kind of just, we're kind of taking public transportation around the city, right, of Sickville or Depressedville or No Progressville. And really where we want to be is to leave town, get in a new vehicle, get in a new ride and go make our trip, our journey, our experience, get the progress filled, right? Start moving. The journey never ends, but we need a new vehicle to get us there because a lot of us are stuck in our home around the same people, watching the same things with the same coworkers and the same regimens and the same routine. And we kind of need to get a spark. We need to get a new vehicle to take us where we want to go. And what I want to unpack for you is a new vehicle for you to use, something that you can utilize. It's a tool to take you on your journey faster. I can't drive it. You have to. I can be a co-pilot. I can mess with the radio station, right? I can give you directions and show you shortcuts, but you gotta drive the vehicle. And that's what I wanna put together for you. And so the whole theme of what we're gonna be covering through this masterclass is building that vehicle for you. What kind of vehicle would you build, right? Then I just got kind of crazy, because I'm like, well, if I had to pick, do you remember the movie? Gone in 60 seconds. If you haven't watched it, that's your assignment, okay? It's in the heyday of the Nicolas Cage days, okay? It's the heyday of it. I think it's actually a remake. But I was a kid when this came out, and this was my favorite movie. I don't know why. I'm not a car junkie or anything like that. But the guy's got, he gets himself into a bind because he's a bad guy, and he steals cars. But then he retires, right? And they get him in a bind, but he was really good at what he does. And so he's got to steal 50 cars, rare cars, in 24 hours. And there's one car he's attempted to steal a couple of times and failed. So he's scared of it as a carjacker. Interesting plot. And so that one car is a 67 Shelby Mustang. And it's like crazy nice how they redid it and everything, okay? And I don't know why as a kid... I just obsessed with it. I had a picture of one in my room. I had a little toy car model one. I think I built one with my hand, you know, like little like toy model one there. But this car was just like, wow. And it was like the theme of the movie. They even named it Eleanor. So if I had to pick a ride, I would want my healthcare system. I would want my life betterment system, my self-improvement vehicle, the thing that's going to carry me to the next stage of life to make progress. I don't want mine to look like that. You can pick what you want. If you like that Volkswagen Beetle, you go for it, Sally. If you want a truck, you get a truck. Whatever it is you want, I'm just showing you the one I would pick. Thank you, Nicolas Cage. Okay? If you haven't watched the movie, go watch it. It's awesome. I, it's one of those movies where it's like it comes on and I could just watch it over and over again because uh, it just never gets old to me. I don't know why. And then in the end, it's a happy ending. So that, I love that kind of stuff. I don't like when they like just like, I like when they get away with it in the, in the movies. That's cool. Okay? So that would be my ride. So we've got to create a vehicle here. So what I'm about to hand you is the keys the permission i even found 67 shelby mustang keys huh like attention that detail barry yeah and i got you i got you perking up now don't i because i'm talking about cars okay so the keys the permission the startup this master class to say hey fire it up now we're going to build the vehicle around it then we're going to build the roadmap then we're going to set up your year this is kind of what's bringing it all together here but you've got the vehicle in front of you You've got to get it and drive. I can't drive it for you. I can't go on your journey. No one can. No one's coming for you. No one's going to take better care of you than you. It is your responsibility to get in your vehicle. You can walk if you want. It just takes longer to get there. But use this vehicle. Start the thing up. Use it. Get going. Start getting into it. Learn some new stuff. You have to think a little differently. You have to approach things a little differently. That's what we're going to do in this master class. And then use this vehicle to make progress. That's what we're after. Every human being has a fundamental need wired into them to make progress. We all just want to go to Progressville. But you never stay there. You got to keep moving. You got to keep going. It never stops. It's the beauty of life. I know you want to sit and have things be the way they were, but they're never going to be. Live for the next moment. Make the new memory. Make the next progress. Every human being progress is at the core we just want progress 
We try the diets, we try the programs, we try the supplements, we try the external stuff because we're just trying to find something and what it is is just progress. We want to improve, we want to get better in all areas of life. I hope that's what you're ready for. If you do not get what I'm saying right now, if you don't get this right, you'll be the same person on a different diet in one month. If you don't have the mentality change, start thinking differently, use a different vehicle, you'll just be the same person eating a little differently or exercising a little differently. It's, it's very surface level when it comes to a lot of our goals, a lot of our resolutions. It's still the same human being just taking a slightly different action. That's what I want to break you free from. But you've got to answer it. What do you want? What do I want? What am I after in this life? What do I want with my relationships? What do I want for my health? What do I want with my finances? What do I want with my career? That might be a tough one for you to answer. Maybe this is a better way to put it. What do I want to want? If given permission, if I was allowed to dream and think and come up with it, what would I want to want? It's a little better way to put it, huh? What do I want? Or maybe what do you want to want? You might take a moment and write this down. What do you want? What is it? What are you after? I don't know. We're going to do some exercises in a little bit where you're going to have some time to scribble through this. But if it's already hitting you, what do you want? Most of you overestimate what you can do in one year and underestimate what you can do in 10 years. Now, Bill Gates said that years ago. I think it's changed in the last couple. Here's the Dr. Living Good version. Most of you overestimate what you can do in one month and underestimate what you can do in one year. Because it's, the world moves so fast now. I think 10 years is too long. If I ask you where you're going to be in 10 years, you can hardly tell me where you're going to be in a month or a day. Some, some of you don't remember what you had for dinner on Saturday, right? Like, well, what did I eat? So we're, but we overestimate it a lot of times when it comes to goal setting and we're getting all hyped up. We overestimate, here's what I want to accomplish in the next month. And we try to pick so many different things. But then we underestimate if we would slow down a little bit and have a game plan, how much we could accomplish in a year. My friends, I've done it the last several years. We have a gratitude jar and my wife puts events and special things that happen with our family or, or work or... Um, trips or friends and we put them in the jar and we go through them at the end of the year and you're like that was this year wow it blows you away i'm going to show you how we put that together and how we break it down now if you're going to have a goal and you're going to decide what you want you better have health be a part of it because when you have your health you have everything when you do not have your health nothing else matters at all don't get spiritual on me. I get it. God's the most important thing. But what good are you to the purpose that God put you on this planet for if you're sick or dead? Let alone your family. Let alone work. Let alone finances. Everything crumbles. I lived it. I lived it. So health better be there for what you want. In fact, I would argue it's a base foundation of it. God's at the center of it all, but you better be building upon health in order to pull all this other stuff off. So we've got to be focusing on health. We will, in later modules, go deep in this. But what most people are doing is we're waiting around to get sick. You see, how do you know if you're healthy right now? What do you base it off of? How you feel? And if you feel okay, you're assuming you're healthy. This is a great example of every other area of your life. This is an analogy for every area. So just because something's not on fire, we think we're fine. Just because we're not bankrupt, we think we're fine with that credit card debt. Just because we're not, uh, I don't even like to say the D word, in our relationship or our marriage, right? then we're fine. There, but could it be way better? Could you be experiencing thrive, thriving in those areas? So with health, it's the same way. It's not how you feel, it's not how you look, it's how you function. 
And the problem is, is a lot of people are waiting to get all the way to the point of dysfunction, which is a symptom, before we start to pay attention to our health. We'll just flat out ignore it. Barry, you'll just ignore your health until you lose it. What a terrible game plan. Just ignore your marriage until you lose it. Just ignore your finances until you're really in a bad position. Terrible game plans. We've got to get proactive with things. Or we'll get to this point of symptoms, which, by the way, in my Living a Daily book, we break, I break this down where this research comes from. When it comes to health, you don't feel it until you get to 60% function. That means your heart, your lungs, these got to be functioning at 60% before you really experience it. If it's your kidneys, you can go all the way to 10% before you even know it. So if we ignore our health and wait around to get here and then cover up the symptoms, that's not health care. That's sick care. All we're doing is waiting to get sick and treating the sickness. So the question with your life, the question with your health, how do I take you from functioning below 100% and then move you that direction? Regardless if you feel the symptom or not, would you like to know how to make progress 1% of the time to improve as close as you can get to 100% in every area of life? That's what it's about. I'm not saying all of us are going to get there. and There's going to be times where we're going to get knocked down. We have some previous damage that maybe won't allow us to go to 100%. If you don't have a thyroid, you can't go to 100% function because you're missing an organ. See what I mean? So we have previous damage, but we can build towards it. So health, I think, is a great analogy of it, but it's got to be also the foundation of that. And we want to improve just little bits at a time, 1% at a time, 1% at a time, towards 100% function and healing. I want to turn you into someone that becomes that 1%. Be that 1%. Be that 1% every day showing up and make little bits of improvement. Just little bits. You don't have to figure it all out this month. You don't have to figure it all out over the next 90 days. In fact, you won't figure it out over the next year. But you'll make some dang good progress and you're going to be a way better version of you. How do you eat this elephant-sized progress, especially when it comes to looking at all of your life problems? Let alone just health. Health is big enough. That's a baby elephant in itself. But when you look at everything in life, it's like an elephant is staring little old you in the face. And your job is you're supposed to take that in, eat it, make progress on it, devour it down. How do you eat an elephant? All of your problems, all of your areas that need work, all of the things in your life you want to improve. How do you eat that? Little bits at a time. One bite at a time. One bite at a time. Little bites at a time. Every day. Little nibble. Little nibble. Nibble away, nibble away, nibble away. Chip, 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 chip. 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%. This is the most exciting thing out of session one I wanted to teach you guys. You're trying to bite too much at a time. You can't handle it as a human being. Your brain, the psychology of it, cannot focus on more than one or two things at once. So you have too many goals and then you make progress in none of them. It's like I have 10 soccer balls and I'm telling you to, to dribble them all the way down the field and shoot them into the net. And you try to dribble all 10 at the same time as opposed to taking one. Drive it down the field and score. Victory. I got a point. And then come backwards, start again, and drive another one down. You're trying to dribble all, all 10 of them. Or let's go to the beautiful Mrs. Living Good to demonstrate what a lot of you look like when it comes to your goals. You do this. You only have two hands. You only have two feet. You only have two eyes. So my suggestion is you should not have more than two goals at one time because it ends up looking like this. <laughs> Little fun in the grocery store. One more time for the juggling act of Mrs. Living Good. <laughs> she can't sustain that, even though I can't even start it. So there are some people in the world that can handle a few things, and God bless them, but for the majority of us, I can't juggle. And even if I could, I'm eventually going to drop something. So I got two hands. I'm just going to hold on to my, right? I'm just going to hold on to my goals. I'm going to hold on to those. I'm not going to try to juggle more than that. And I'm going to focus on these two things. I have two legs. I can dribble maybe two soccer balls, right? I might actually be more effective and faster if I just focused on one. But I'm going to call it two. And we're focusing on too many things. We're trying to multitask too much. And to do too many things at once is to do none. To do too many things at once is to do none. To do none. This is where a lot of you become 
you feel like failures. You give up. You get on Dr. Living Good. I'm always unmotivated because you aren't scoring goals. If I score a goal, I'm like, yeah, let's do it again. But I focused on one ball going to one goal, not 10 balls going to one goal. Because then they're like, well, I kicked that one out of bounds. I lost track of that one, and I'm just going to give up. You ever feel that way? I have. I've got to get you dialed into one or two things. Hold on to one or two things. Don't try to juggle. One or two. Stop multitasking. You need me to go a little deeper with it. Pull out a pen and paper. Pull out a pen and paper. If you've got a journal in front of you, just go to the end. You've got some room. You've got some lines. You've got some note taking. Okay? Pull out a pen and paper. I got support in the room with me. I'm going to have them do it too. You're going to need pen and paper. Okay? So, while you're getting that, here we go. All right? I have an activity for you. It's going to be timed. Okay? There's a massive incentive of feeling like you're the best at this activity. Okay? That's, that's the goal. That's the, what you win. But I want to see how well you do at this. All right? So, grab a pen, grab a paper. I told you to get it at the beginning. Now you're slowing everyone else down. Okay? Yeah, we need a win. We need to get a win. So, I'm going to prove to you that multitasking is costing you greatly. Here's what you need to do. Okay? I want to see how fast you can get this done. On this screen right here, there is the numbers 1 through 26. Don't start anything yet. You just hold on. Okay? 1 through 26 and the alphabet. Here's what your task is. I will time you to see how long it takes you to do this. Write the number one, write A below it. Write the number two, write B below it. Write the number three, write C below it. You got it? Capital letters, small letters, I don't care how you write the alphabet. But it needs to be one A, two B, three C. Got it? Was that clear instructions, support team? They're giving me a nodding yes. Sally, if you are behind, I don't know if I can help you. What else do you need me to explain? Okay, you ready? On your paper, don't start yet. We gotta time this. The time is very important. I gotta see how fast this takes you to do. One, and then A. Two, and then B. Just like I have it on the screen, okay? Ready, set, and then when you, oh, hang on, not yet. When you are complete, look at your time. Because I'm not gonna be able to keep track of time for all of you. You look at your time. Support team, I will tell you when you're done of what your time was. You, you track what your time was. Ready, marks, get set, go. All right, we'll have to add two seconds. I'll stop the clock. My bad. You're fine, though. You keep going. Just add two seconds. I could talk during this and really mess you up. Come on. Keep going. Fast as you can, then look at your time. Thirty-seven. Write it down. Write down your time. Once you know what it is, once you're done, write your time down. You got it. There's a few that it's going to take longer. I'm going to go until a minute ten. Let's go minute fifteen. You may not be able to write as fast. Keep going all the way through, and then write down your time. Please add two seconds to your time because I screwed the clock up. I got a lot going on here. All right. <laughs> add two seconds to your time because I started it late. Thought I had it and I clicked off of it. 32, 38 from our live audience. 32, 25, 49, 32. Okay, nice, fast. Oh, 25 is, uh, is the fastest I've seen. That's pretty good. 56, 43. All right. If you're, um, if you're over a minute, count a minute as 60 seconds and then add how many seconds you went over. Okay, so if you were a minute five, count that as 65 seconds. If you're a minute 15, count that as 75 seconds. Okay, got it? So you have it written down. You did it wrong you will not learn from this exercise so if you cheated that's on you all right we're gonna go round two okay round two 
it's, it's okay if you're slow, you're gonna get a chance to improve. Now in the second round here, what I'm gonna have you do is you're going to write the numbers one through 26, and then below it, you're gonna write A through Z. So you're just gonna focus on numbers, then you're gonna do letters, okay? So the blue row, you're gonna, t you're gonna write first, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, all the way to 26. Then you're gonna go A, B, C, D, 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 below it, just like you did before, but you're not bouncing back and forth from one A, two B, three C, okay? Got it, is that clear instruction? You know what to do? Let me reset this clock. Second round, all numbers first, then write all the letters, and then write down your time when you are done, and go. Twenty-seven. Write your time down. Write your time down. Divide the little by the big. Keep going. And see what your numbers are for the second one. Okay. You get it? I'll let the clock keep going for a couple more seconds. This round should be significantly faster. On average, there's a 45% difference between round one and round two. Here's what the numbers mean. Some of you didn't do it the right way out of the gate. So your main thing for this year is to follow instructions and steps. <laughs> I saw some of you were like, oh, that's how I did it the first time. Okay, so we gotta slow it down. That could be, there could be something to that. We could self-analyze and say, you know what? I didn't, uh, I didn't get, it. I thought I got it, but I didn't, I got ahead of myself. So maybe that's an area we gotta work on. So you just proved another point with this exercise. Now, what we did the first time is we multitasked. Okay, and one person's like, it would just be easier if we wrote all the numbers and letters. <laughs> I'm proving a point here. I know there's an easier way to do it. But when you go from one, A, Two, B, isn't that hard? You're like three, if you didn't look at the screen and you had to do it on your own, it's like you have to think about what letter am I on corresponding to each number. Your, your brain has to process so much more because you're trying to do two different things at once as opposed to dial it in and just, I'm getting my numbers done. Then I'm getting my letters done. I'm focusing on my water intake. Then I'm gonna get my food right. I'm focusing on out of debt first, then I'm gonna get a saving. Like if you just dial in on one thing and get laser focused, you score a goal. And so on average, the time difference between number one versus number two is about 45%. Some of you may be even 25% difference. And you can figure that out by just dividing the smaller number over the bigger number, number two over number one, and you get it. What was yours? So a 31% difference, the support team member that's with me here, difference in between those. So you're more efficient when you don't multitask. That's the purpose of the activity we just did. Too many, to do too many things at once is to do none. Stop juggling. Hold on to one or two things, focus there, that's it. Why are you unmotivated? Why do you feel like you're not making progress? Because you're trying to tackle too many goals in too many areas of your life as opposed to establishing one habit roughly every 30 days with your health and with your life. If you did that this year, just one habit a month, one for your health, one for your life, health, life, those are the two things we can grasp. You would have 24 new habits by the end of the year if you did one for health and one for life. If you just did one for health each month, just, you know what, I'm going to get it in my routine that I'm gonna work out six days a week. I'm gonna get it in my routine that I'm drinking half of my body weight in ounces in water. I am getting it in my routine that my, my breakfast is going to be this, or I'm going to skip breakfast, or, you see what I mean? Focus, dial it in, get a win. 
It's insanely powerful, and you're going to win the marathon. You're going to win the journey when you can just advance forward a little bit. A lot of you are trying to sprint, and stuff's going everywhere, and you're dropping the balls, and you're kicking them around, and you feel unmotivated, and it's so demotivating, and you quit. Progress. If you can give yourself progress, you won't. That's the key to the motivation. Now, you do need a little bit of, oh, sometimes, but I'll give you that every Monday, Wednesday, Friday if you want to hang out with me. The other key with it is changing your state, and that's what I'm referring to there. So sometimes you don't feel like making the progress. That's why your environment matters. That's why what you put in your ears matters. And so we're gonna be going through that because I think state is insanely important to get you to want to choose to do the habit. But you're gonna have to get a system to set you up. Some research now showing 66 days. So focus on one habit for your health, one habit for your life, and keep calm. There's only 66 days to go. So the researchers, are, a lot of people have always taught 21 days. There's definitely truth to that, but there are some things you can't learn in 21 days. So it kind of depends on your goal. So a little bit more realistic number, if you were to lump in all activities, like the habit of learning Spanish is gonna take me longer than 21 days, right? So there's some things that you can't, like I, the habit of making a smoothie, I can learn in about two days. So some stuff comes a little bit faster, and on average, it's gonna take about 66 to get real significant habits. We just kind of went down the middle there and went 30 days. Every 30 days, we re-rotate. The journal teaches you to um, look at your progress evaluation, see how you're doing with progress, reset your goals for the next 30 and go again, and then every 90, we do a complete revaluation of how everything is going. And what this method does for your life is you start to parlay. Par, huh? Parlay, 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 parlay. When you can develop a habit and stack it on another habit, your goals start piling up. Parlaying is a betting terminology. I'm not a betting man, but I do understand what a parlay is. Here is, I think, very powerful if you take a peek. Let me blow this up really quick for you so you can see it real nice. Okay, if you were to take a bet, Cowboys didn't make it in, sorry Cowboys fans, um, Bucks, Chiefs, if you were to make an individual bet of $100 on each of those games, for example, okay, you could get a payout of this amount, 90, 90, 90, okay, given the odds. That same bet, if you parlayed them together, you stack them on top of it, meaning you could win by just the Cowboys winning, you could win by just the Bucks winning, you could win by just the Chiefs winning. But if the Cowboys, Bucks, and Chiefs win, you now almost 2x the payout. For the same games with the same outcomes, but when you stack them together, the return is two times greater. Did you follow? Individually betting on these things, individual goals of one-offs have a return. But when you can put and stack goals all together and one is working off the next, and so you get a habit established, you keep that habit and you go to the next habit. And then you keep that habit and you go to the next habit. You are now parlay, 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 parlay. You are parlaying your goals. They start stacking up and the return is exponential. Sometimes we get stuck and we feel unmotivated because we accomplished one thing, but we didn't keep going. As a mentor once said, we get in the hot air balloon and we go up. And we're flying and we're doing it. And here we are, we're way up in the air. Look at the view. Wow. I didn't know I could get up here. Wow. I didn't know I could lose 50 pounds. Wow. I didn't think I could accomplish that in my life. And then we forget what takes the balloon up. See, it starts to come back down to earth. We've got to pull the heat again. <laughs> We need a little heat. We need a little challenge. We need a little adversity. We need to do something a little harder. Body loves hard things. And just when they're hard, we need to give up on them. But if we can do something and accomplish it, we need to learn from that and then immediately stack on it and learn from it and immediately stack on it and keep that momentum going. Some of you lost momentum because you allowed it to stop because you thought you were there. We're never there. We're never there. That's why I encourage a lot of you to pick things that you actually enjoy. Dr. Living, what do you think about the vegetarian diet or the keto diet? I don't know, can you do it two years from now? Well, I don't know if I wanna do it that long. 
Well, then don't do it. Because you're going to feel unmotivated eventually, and you're going to be like, gosh, I am really craving a burger. And you're going to go back to it. Or, gosh, I, I, I really want some more carbs. Why don't you figure out a healthy way of eating that involves some carbs then that allows you some leeway? I'm not saying for 30 days or 60 days you can't give something a try and go dive into it. But if it's not sustainable long term, you've got to be careful there because eventually you're going to fall back down with the hot air balloon ride. Right. Because you're going to start to give in. Demotivates. We've got to parlay them. We've got to parlay them. Stack these goals up. You got to take responsibility for it. You got to be the one to stack it. You got to be the one to decide what it is you want and go after it, and not do too many things. Because no one will take better care of you than you. It's your job to get this stuff understood. It's your job to make the mental change. You just got to change the lens. You just got to start looking at things a little differently. The main thing that stops ourselves is ourselves. The main thing that stops ourselves is ourselves. We're one of our biggest enemies because the way we talk to ourselves. If some of you talk the way you talk to yourself to me, we'd probably end up in a fist fight. We gotta change that around. We gotta start looking through a lens differently. What if you focused on building health instead of the drugs and the disease? What if you focused on gratitude and what is right instead of on stress and what is going wrong? What if you focused on what you could do instead of what you can't do or are not? It's a change of perspective. That's all it is. He who asks good questions gets good answers. Shift the focus. I know you failed in the past. That doesn't mean it repeats itself in the future. I know you've struggled with unmotivation, but it doesn't mean you're not a motivation, motivated person because you've been motivated before. But we gotta change the approach about how we go about it. Because if your plan was a 30-day diet plan, then I can see why you fell off after 30 days. It was only supposed to go that way. Well, your life is not a program. Your health is not a program. You're gonna be on this bus ride till the bus stops and you gotta get off. You know what I'm talking about? So we gotta tap in and we gotta use this special system. Your RAS, reticular activation system, might be holding you back from real results. Programmed inside of your brain is your own personal Google search engine. It is blank. Talk about a dash dot. It's blank. You can search for whatever you would like. Too many of our Google search bars are filled with what did so-and-so wear to a get-together? Who is so-and-so dating now? Where is, uh, what's the deal with this politician in this place? What's the deal with the economy? We fill it with fear. We fill it with doubt. We fill it with stuff that really doesn't impact us. We fill it with other people's opinions. We fill it with agendas of people that really don't care about us. We fill it with stuff that does not make an impact about you scoring a goal, you making progress. It's distracting us. What are you focused on right now? What are you searching for? That search engine works. You gotta be careful what you type into it. If you ever made the decision to buy a car before, your brain types car into your head and suddenly everywhere you go, you notice cars for sale and types of cars that are driving by you when before your brain never picked that up. Why? Because you programmed your reticular activating system. When we make the jump here through the course of deciding what your first health and life goal are, if you can focus on this every day and plug it into the Google search engine every day, you start to narrow the focus. You start to program the reticular activating center to go seek out what you're after. But it goes back to the beginning of this session. What do you want? What do you want to want? Because that's what's going to get typed in there. And if you type in garbage, you're going to get garbage out. You're going to get spam. So we've got to think critically about what we actually want and then we're gonna understand why, which is what we're gonna work on in a little bit. A lot to ponder there. The main takeaway, stop doing too much at one time.
and fix your focus in on what you actually want.